Multiple big storms are coming to the United States over the next few days with more severe weather in store, including damaging winds, large hail and tornadoes. Additionally, a cold stretch of weather will continue throughout the rest of May from the central and southern plains back to the east coast. And lastly, we are expecting a very different weather pattern as we go into June with more significant severe weather likely on the horizon, but in very different areas. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States states over the next seven days and we'll begin with what's happening across the country today and we've had a lot of big storms just over the last 24 hours including areas in Oklahoma and Texas where we had a bunch of damaging winds hail and even a few tornadoes yesterday and we also had a big round of thunderstorms actually two that went through the Dixie Alley yesterday so overall a lot of this activity is beginning to wind down but we are expecting severe weather to continue throughout the morning and even into the early afternoon and then later today once all these storms clear out of Texas and the Louisiana. There actually could be some more discrete supercells that fire off later today back over in West and Central Texas, which could pose a threat for significant hail and maybe even a couple of tornadoes. So definitely something that we're gonna have to keep an eye on out there. For the remainder of the country, we're still looking very dry across the Midwest, Northern Ohio Valley in the Northeast, but I do think that will change as we go later into May and as well as into June. And here's a recap of yesterday's severe weather event. We end up having a pretty large area of wind damage reports across Mississippi, Alabama, Alabama, Georgia, and Tennessee. Lots of trees and power lines were down from high winds yesterday. And then back over in the Southern Plains, it was a large variety of different stuff, including very large hail, which we actually end up having up to six inch sized hail yesterday, just off to the north of Abilene. We also had several tornadoes. We actually had six different tornado reports, most of which were in different areas from New Mexico all the way back over into Central Texas. So we almost had a tornado outbreak. We had at least six tornadoes that technically would classify as at least a small scale tornado outbreak outbreak but nonetheless really more than anything it was just a general severe weather day yesterday with a few tornadoes now let's talk more about our severe weather potential for the next few days beginning with today which is monday we have a level two out of five slight risk of severe weather from southwestern arkansas back into the hill country of texas and a large marginal threat of severe weather from colorado back into south carolina and florida where the main concern for today will be damaging winds in addition to some scattered large hail we could actually have a few storms that produce hail as large as the size of softballs this afternoon just off to the west there of Austin, Texas. And there's also a chance for a few tornadoes. And I personally think that this tornado threat may be upgraded later, especially for back over here in the hill country of Texas. I do think there's a chance for a 5% tornado risk, as I do think the chances of a tornado or two are going to be a bit more elevated in that region, with discrete supercells appearing to be a bit more likely. However, there is still a large 2% tornado risk, where an isolated tornado or two will be possible throughout the morning hours into the early afternoon, anywhere from from northwestern Alabama all the way back over just to the south there of Dallas Fort Worth so definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware as we go into Tuesday the risk of severe weather continues to shift down to the south however our storm system will actually be growing more over to the east and we'll also have another storm system that'll start to grow back over in the high plains especially as we go into Wednesday which we'll talk more about here in a second but we have two different slight risks of severe weather in place for Tuesday one of which is in Louisiana Mississippi and the other one is down in South Texas where the main concerns again will be damaged damaging winds in large to very large hail. There's also a chance for an isolated tornado or two just off to the west there of Houston and just off to the southwest of San Antonio. So definitely stay weather aware on Tuesday. So here's the timing for today. We are expecting that line of thunderstorms to continue all the way through the mid to late morning. Low tornado risk back over in East Texas and as well as Western Louisiana out of this line. And this line should really be falling apart by around 11 to 12 o'clock later this morning. And then by the early afternoon, those storms are going to start to fizzle. There might be a little bit of a resurgence of severe weather back over in Mississippi and as well as Alabama. But I think generally speaking, isolated damaging winds are the main concern, maybe a low tornado risk. And right around three to four o'clock is when I think storms will start to fire right back up again back over here in West Texas. Wherever that outflow battery and that line of storms doesn't really go to, that is where I think there will be enough instability for more supercells to fire this afternoon. So generally speaking, most of this will be to the west of Austin and just down to the south of Lubbock, Texas, where significant hail will be the biggest concern, but there's also a chance for an isolated tornado or two wouldn't even rule out a large tornado with today's environment it's just going to be contingent on a storm riding along an outflow boundary similar to what we've seen here over the last few days as well and then by around 
6 to 7 o'clock, those storms will continue to produce some really big hail and likely a low-end tornado risk even past sunset tonight. And then after about midnight or so, these storms will be falling apart. And then we may have another cluster of storms even go through areas like Dallas, Fort Worth overnight tonight into early Tuesday morning. Same thing back over in Houston. We'll have to keep an eye on that as we head into daybreak Tuesday morning across southeast Texas. And eventually as we go into Tuesday, we are talking about that line of storms pushing across Louisiana and Mississippi, which is why we have a slight risk of severe weather in place, mainly for a damaging wind threat. But there is a chance for a few more supercells to develop mainly back over in the hill country of Texas and South Texas Tuesday afternoon, which will produce big hail and also the potential maybe for an isolated tornado. And then across the southeast for today, a line of storms will attempt to refire later this afternoon across Mississippi, eventually going towards Alabama. This is by around six o'clock. Some isolated to scatter damaging winds, a little bit of hail and a low tornado risk will exist. These storms will likely be pretty weak as they move into Georgia late this evening into the overnight hours. Just some gusty winds will be the biggest concern. And then as we go into tomorrow, another line of storms will be moving across Mississippi, Louisiana, and back into Alabama, where additional damaging winds and a little bit of hail is possible, and also a low end, but not zero, tornado risk here from Louisiana back into central Alabama before eventually these are weaker as they move into Georgia late Tuesday night. And then back over in the southern plains, as we go into Wednesday, we are expecting another round of severe weather but this should be primarily across the high plains as we go into Wednesday afternoon we are expecting multiple supercells to fire off mainly in far west Texas New Mexico and even back up into southeast Colorado southwest Kansas some isolated hail storms will be possible in addition to a low end tornado threat so generally over the next three to four days we are talking about still a lot of storms just I think overall we are not talking about any major severe weather outbreaks however I do think that'll change as we go into June I do think we're going to start to see some more potent storm systems move across the Rockies, and that should lead to the return of some significant severe weather outbreaks. So let's talk more about the long-term forecast over the next week or two, beginning with what's happening on Wednesday. That low pressure system will continue to move towards the East Coast. Some showers and even some thunderstorms will continue in parts of the Ohio Valley back into the Southeast, but generally severe weather is going to be pretty low Tuesday night into Wednesday in those areas. By Wednesday afternoon and evening, there will be a resurgence of more showers and thunderstorms from the Gulf Coast back into the High Plains, where the biggest concern will be damaging winds and hail, but there's a low chance for a tornado or two. And then on Thursday, we're going to start to see a high pressure system build across the central and northern plains, which means a lot of our shower and storm activity is going to be pushing off to the east. We will likely still have some isolated severe weather on Thursday across the Ohio Valley, back into the Dixie Alley and along the Gulf Coast. But overall, I'm not expecting any significant severe weather events right now on Thursday. I think everything's going to be pretty isolated to widely scattered. And then on Friday, that storm system will move further to the east as this high pressure system builds across the Great Plains, basically acting like a wall, preventing any sort of big storms from forming. There will be plenty of rain, though, on Friday along the East Coast. Scattered showers and thunderstorms will continue. And then by Saturday and Sunday, I think overall, we're not talking about really any organized severe weather events for most of the lower 48. So the very tail end of May into the very beginning of June does look to be at least somewhat quiet, but I think that'll change by the middle to later half of the first week of June. I think we're going to start to see at least one, if not a couple of significant storm systems move right over the Rockies, which should lead to the return of some significant severe weather. Right now, the GFS model is hinting at a low pressure system right over Colorado during that first week stretch there of June. And if that does happen, we should have a lot of turbulent mixing, meaning a lot of cold and warm airs mixing together. And that should create the potential here for at least some organized severe weather potential in the central, southern, and northern plains, and then also back into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. So I do think we are not far from seeing another big severe weather event. But again, that is still about a week or two out from now so nothing in the near term at least for most areas in the ohio valley midwest and the northern plains but by the beginning of june i think things will start to get active once again and with all that said we still have a lot of rainfall to come over the next seven days we are expecting a widespread swath of at least one to three inches of rain from the central and southern plains back into the appalachian mountains near pennsylvania and west virginia and then on top of that there will be a few areas especially in texas and louisiana including today's rainfall which will likely be the most significant that could lead to some areas picking up between three to seven inches of rainfall so definitely make sure that you're turning around don't drown on the roadways and staying vigilant when it comes to flooding low-lying areas will definitely easily flood with this environment additionally we had some big flooding yesterday in the oklahoma city metro area that could easily happen again today and tomorrow in similar areas down further to the south in texas and as well as louisiana and then our temperatures for the next week or two will continue to stay pretty much up and down for most of the country we're going to be dealing with below average temperatures for a vast majority of the great plains essentially any anywhere east of the Rocky Mountains through the end of this week. And then eventually by the weekend, cold air will continue
continue mainly in the central and southern plains back into the northeast while warmer air builds off to the west and north of the Rocky Mountains with the potential for some record breaking temperatures back over in Montana and even southern Canada. Eventually into early June I think this trend will continue where we're just dealing with a mix of warm and cold air nothing really too substantial in terms of temperature shifts. I think just generally speaking at least for the next seven to ten days we're dealing with below average temperatures from the southern plains back through the northeast and above average temperatures across the Rockies and as well as the northern plains. The Cloud Prediction Center also agrees with this forecast for the very tail end of May into early June. Below average temperatures are more likely from Vermont back into Texas and then above average temperatures are likely for most of Florida and also across the Midwest northern plains and along the Rockies and along the west coast as well. And as always thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe down below. We might be live later today so definitely click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live and we will likely have another video tomorrow if we don't for some reason it'll be on Wednesday so stay tuned we'll have a lot more weather updates coming up especially as June does appear to be active uh, across the United States.